Your local cheese seller can tell you a lot about the cheese you buy, where it comes from, how long it's been ripened, whether the taste is mild or sharp. But if you want to know anything about the health of the cows that produce that cheese, good luck. What do you tell them about the health of the cows and how the cows are raised? That, oh, they, there's not much information really for that aspect. In fact, there's one contagious disease in cattle that even these cheese sellers have likely never heard of. It's a wasting disease known as yonis. Cows get severe diarrhea, but they can still produce milk. <laughs> Newfoundland dairy farmer Crosby Williams lost at least one cow to yonis a few years ago. You'll see the cow lose weight, and it doesn't matter what she eats, she'll never put on weight, and uh, she slowly goes downhill to the point where you got to get rid of her. Still, when Williams' cow got sick, she yeah. was milked anyway, and when yeah. she was eventually slaughtered, her meat went into the food chain. The fact that cows infected with yonis can still be put into the Canadian food chain would only be an issue if there was concern that it posed a risk to human health. Well, in fact, the nature of that risk is the subject of hot debate. David Crichton believes he got sick after eating food that came from cows that were contaminated with yonis. Crichton has Crohn's disease. It's a debilitating bowel disorder with symptoms that are virtually identical to yonis in cows. Crichton believes he got Crohn's because he's infected with the same bacteria that causes yonis, and he thinks he probably got it from milk or meat. It just, um, common sense and the balance of probability kind of just weighs in favor of this bacteria being involved in Crohn's, especially when those people with Crohn's have a, a seven times increased chance of being infected with the bacteria than those without Crohn's. The bacteria that causes Yoni's disease is called Mycobacterium avium paratuberculosis. It's called MAP for short. It's in the same family as leprosy and TB. Calves are infected probably at birth through their mother's milk and feces. But the symptoms don't show up for many years, sometimes not for 15 years. So even healthy looking cows may be infectious for a long time before they look sick. Our general recommendation is to test the entire herd. University of Guelph's Dr. David Kelton says between 15 and 50 percent of Canadian dairy herds have at least some cows infected with Yoni's disease. Rates are even higher in the U.S. Trends over time we're really not sure because we haven't had repeated studies that have sort of tried to measure the, the incidence or the change in prevalence. They're not exactly sure how much Yoni's is out there because testing is voluntary. The tests are expensive for farmers and governments haven't seen a need to make it mandatory. Around the world, rates of Yoni's seem to be going up, not unlike rates of Crohn's disease in humans. And if they are the same disease, does that mean cows with Yoni's are spreading the bacteria through milk, meat and groundwater to kids? It's an alarming thought. Who doesn't feed their children milk and hamburgers? But is it possible that in some kids, those who may have a genetic predisposition, these foods could set them up for Crohn's disease later in life? It's not something that the dairy industry has been eager to contemplate. We got it from New Zealand. Montreal microbiologist Dr. Marcel Baer is trying to understand the link between the bacteria that causes yonis and its role in Crohn's disease. His lab has focused on finding evidence of the infection in people with Crohn's. There is now more and more evidence that there's an association. And by that I mean uh, different labs in different countries have found presence of the DNA of this organism or they've seen it by microscope or other ways to say that there is an association between having this organism and having Crohn's disease. There's no question that cattle infected with yonis are entering the Canadian food chain. Until there's more evidence the bacteria harms humans, Health Canada doesn't consider diseased cows a risk, something that boggles David Crichton's mind. The cows tested positive, there's, there's no way they should be put into the food chain. Um, it's just too much of a risk. But not only are cows that test positive going into the food chain, there may be many more that are infected but never tested. The Canadian Food Inspection Agency says even if the bacteria was harmful to humans, pasteurization and cooking would kill it. But that's not completely true. The live organism has been detected in pasteurized milk in the U.S. and the U.K. 
In Canada, there's been no widespread effort to try to find the live bacteria in retail milk or meat, so no one can say whether it's there or not. It may be years before there's definitive proof that a bacteria from cattle is infecting humans and causing Crohn's. In the meantime, some say, why not take a proactive approach? Try at least to contain the spread of yonis on farms so it's less likely to enter the food chain. That's what's been done in the UK and Ireland. They've also told milk distributors to increase pasteurization time to more effectively kill the live bacteria. I think from a societal point of view, we have to be careful when we start to think of a microbe that could be causing a lot of people to be sick with a chronic disease. People weren't cured of it. Even Crohn's experts, who aren't convinced Yonis and Crohn's are the same disease, would prefer to see infected cattle taken out of the food chain. Would I rather know that there isn't MAP-infected cattle in ground beef? Yeah, I'd, I'd rather know that they, that they were really culled and weren't part of the ground beef chain. If the dairy and cattle industries ignored Yonis before, that's changing. Farm associations have even come forward with funding to help determine whether Canadian food is contaminated. But it's going to take a lot of money, some of it from governments, to do widespread testing for Yonis in cows and the bacteria in food. However he got it, David Crichton may have to battle Crohn's for the rest of his life. He believes future generations might be spared if officials tackled the problem of Yoni's disease on farms now. Maureen Taylor, CBC 